people started getting poked on Facebook. Ex oh, poking. Couldn't wait to get poked. <laughs> Welcome to Millennial Made. My name is Rod, your host. Um, I do this uh, every week because that's how podcasts work. And I have today funny person, comedian, also a fellow Dear Media host, Allie Colbert. Hello. Hello. Um, Allie, tell us a little bit about the Allie Colbert Show. Sure. Um, so I am a stand-up comedian, as you said, and the Allie Colbert Show is my manic musings, exploration of sexuality, wow. dating, little pop culture when I'm in the mood. Ooh. I like to hate on stuff. Good. You know, I have a shtick and I kind of roll with that shtick. I like yeah. to talk about growing up closeted. I like to talk about being gay and how it's unfair. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. Just have been, fun. Been there. Um, so, you, <laughs> so you said you have your fiance on? I have and, my fiance on a lot yeah, on the show. Yeah, and you guys just get high. and We yeah. get high and I, you know, I have her sit down and I say, you gotta listen to me for an hour. Good. And, uh, you know, that's how I treat the girl one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am the boy one. And mm -hmm. I make my girl one sit down. I say, you got to listen, girl one. I know you just cooked dinner, but mm -hmm. you got to listen to daddy now. Daddy's home. Daddy's, daddy's home. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We have, we have fun. I like, I don't know why. Like, it's like when we're recording the podcast, it's almost like we like step into this place of being like, super, you like really have to listen to each other. Right. Like you're super connected. I'm like, whoa, I haven't yeah. looked you in the eye in a year. Yeah. It's kind of performing. Which it, you, you do for a living as yeah, well. But yeah, it's, it's like that. It, yeah. it is a certain degree of performance. Yeah. Can I ask you, as a comedian? You can ask me anything. What is your opinion on TikTokers calling themselves comedians? You know, it's repulsive. Okay. And uh, <laughs> here's the thing. TikTok, so have you done stand-up? No. I'm actually I'm starting classes at Second City just for my own. Just Sorry for like to hear that. So, <laughs> um, at Second City or just stand-up in general? Well, the thing with the TikTok, the, 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 it's irritating. Okay. It's irritating because you have a lot of these people, mm. not you, Rob. I've never called and myself a comedian. I'm, nothing and I'm won't. saying applies to you. Okay, thank you. You have a lot of these people on YouTube, you know, holding up a pair of like fancy sneakers and getting a million followers. And then they're like, come see me play Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? What mm -hmm. are you going to do? And it's amazing. They have people come out. They're like, they have the celebrity around them, but then they don't have anything to actually... They've never written a joke. So you can be a comedian, I mean, I yeah. guess, but you're not, are, are you a stand-up? I don't know. Stand not you. No, but stand-up isn't just getting up there and riffing. It's like prepared jokes and you're like, right, you, there's thought that goes into it. Yeah. yeah. And, and by the way, also, I think that a lot of stand-up comedians have that attitude of like, you know, I'm, I'm saying it's disgusting. I'm a little, I'm sort of kidding, but I think a lot of <laughs> them have that attitude them. because they're jealous, honestly, mm -hmm. because TikTok is... I fucking love TikTok. I yeah. mean, like getting the followers and whether or not those followers translate to like seats mm -hmm. in person is kind of yeah. interesting. It's like, yeah. okay, how much money can I make from you guys? You're yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, you're opportunistic by putting your, you were a stand up comedian and yeah. now you've seen the opportunity. Yeah. So I think that's what a lot of stand up comedians, when they're opportunistic, from what I see, as uh, like Hannah Burner. Hannah Burner. Yeah. Just had her on the pod. Her episode yeah. comes out this week for me. Love her. Um, she's great. Reality star as well. Um, but she's, re she's really, she's not, you know, doing like the TikTok thing. <clears throat> like she's playing at clubs. She's writing yeah. stand up. She was a new face at Montreal. She's headlining comedy clubs on the road. She's, there's nothing glamorous about what she's doing. Right. You know, are you, tr are you, what do you do? What is the intention with uh, Second City? I just, I, for my, I just want to grow my, I guess, speaking skills and writing skills, even with the podcast, you know. Totally. And, and I also want to find a way to release my internalized trauma, which I heard stand-up's really good for. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about my religious trauma. That's like my main bit. Oh, my God. Yeah. I need to hear. I need to hear. Oh, everything. really? No. I okay. need, no, no, no. Yes, oh, yeah, really, no, really. No, if you don't want to. No, so meaning I mean, no, I like I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I grew up Christian, like yeah. very much sheltered. Um, And I love my parents. We have a good relationship. Uh -huh. just don't agree with, you know everything that I grew up with. Yeah. And um, yeah, just you, if the second I said, I think I have depression, it was prayed away. You know, that was always the the response. And I think there's, I think there's a lot there, a lot of jokes in there. Yeah. So, Did it yeah. work? The, the prayer. The prayer. Yeah. And I'm, I'm no longer depressed. My anxiety's poof gone. Yeah. Yeah. That so is so God. disheartening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's how it goes. Or just being put into boxes of masculinity um, or what a man should be 
and how a man should take care of a woman, you know, and all this. And it's just, you know. Why can't and, we hit him? Yeah. <laughs> I totally, uh, come on. Right, sure. <laughs> no, I, I totally yeah. hear you. Yeah, it's yeah. troubling. I mean, <clears throat> it's amazing how like, I was going in like a 90s hole looking through your content and stuff, but it's amazing how the 90s, it wasn't that long ago, but the difference in like social behavior and social attitudes towards yeah. certain things. I mean, I'm thinking about queerness because I grew up closeted in the 90s. And my sister, who's just five years younger than me, had a totally different experience in high school where people were like more accept. I mean, yeah, there's wild. Um, the 21 Jump Street movie with Channing Tatum. Yeah. Ben Hill. Do you remember that one came out? And the popular kid was the theater kid, mm -hmm. you know, it, Back in the day, the jocks were the popular kids. So I think that's so true. Is growing up in the nineties, it was the perfect family was the football star son, yeah. the daughter who was good at math, and like that's what sitcoms portrayed. Right. Um, which I think in general, I think that's why people rewatch shows like Gilmore Girls because that was you know kind of breaking the boundaries. She's like a single mom, and she was dating around, and she's like just having a good time. Yeah. Rather than you know, more a whore. Yeah. yeah so I didn't <laughs> want to say she's sex positive, which mm -hmm. kind of is. Um, and then. Or you, but then you have Everybody Loves Raymond or King of Queens, where it's the man goes to work and the woman stays at home with the kids. Yeah, like yeah, wah, yeah, wah. exactly. Yeah. But that's what people consumed. So yeah. you know, being a child watching that, you're like, this is what I need to be, and if I'm not, then I know. I'm and a look, failure. and look what kids have nowadays. They have euphoria. Yep. They know it's okay yeah. to do crack on a bicycle. It, it's totally fine. It's like totally, this is what you do. It's totally fine as a minor to hook up with uh, someone's dad. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. That's how we live our lives. Perfect. Great. I don't, actually, intense. I had to turn the show off because my anxiety got way too high. Yeah, it, but. It, pray it away. Pray it away. And, and yeah, I do. I, I had to pray after watching it for you. I actually did. No. I needed to take, take a shower. Yeah, right, right. But uh, Zendaya could do no wrong. She's great. That girl. Talented actress. Talented actress. I actually did want to talk to you, though, growing up. Um, did you always think you were funny? I'm sure you get that question. Did time. I always think I was funny? Did you know you were funny? Did your parents know you were funny? I just was funny. Yeah. I didn't have like a like a thing where I would go in my room and go, I don't know, we're yeah. doing something pretty interesting out yeah. there. <laughs> like I, I just, I liked making people laugh. Yeah. I always instinctually went for that feeling. Like I remember when I was like five, six, my dad would whisper things in my ear to go and tell people like on the street or in restaurants or like my relatives. And I remember I would like say, you know, just like comments that were funny coming out of me. Mm -hmm. And then people would laugh and I remember how like tingly that made me wow. and just being addicted to that feeling. That's what right. I, that's what I remember. And then when did you start your uh, stand up career? And so I always, I wanted to do stand up. That was always on my mind since I was little. I was like, oh, it would be cool. And I became obsessed with watching stand up. Oh, who did you watch? Who did you consume? I watched, I watched Seinfeld. I'm telling you for the last time that special, I would watch it on repeat. Yeah. I thought that was hysterical. I was like eight. I was like, this is so, so Jerry Seinfeld. Funny. <laughs> yeah. I love the bits. The bit. I thought, oh my God, I would like lose control. That I loved Wanda Sykes. Yeah, Wanda Sykes was great. Oh my God. And I I would do stand up for my family. Mm -hmm. When I was maybe like 12, I started like doing stand up. I would actually, I wrote, wrote down all the jokes I would see in these specials and just sort of like try and perform. And I remember being like, it's weird that Wanda's material doesn't sound as funny com coming from me. Yeah. And then I, when I went to college, I studied in New York, and I was like, I want to start doing stand up when I moved to the city. So I started. I started at seventeen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You grew up around New York. I grew up in Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Suburbs. Um, suburbs. Suburbs. Yeah. I think I was. I started consuming stand up when, because um, stand up, you know, generally was inappropriate mm -hmm. um, under the, the church. The Lord. The, under the Lord. Um, but I remember Dane Cook was the first one. Oh the, yeah. Every, as is DK Lounge. Every, every other guy. Yeah. Um, and but oh, my God, mom yeah. loved Louis. What's his face? CK. Um, no. Anderson. Louis Anderson. Yeah, we would watch his special actually. Cool. Growing up. Yeah. Dane Cook he's just good. got married. Yeah, to a twenty-year-old. So right? it's to a twenty-three-year-old, and he's like fifty. Something. He's like, I've loved her for five years. And so, yeah, the math ain't math in there, my guy. It's like, yeah, now yeah. you've loved her for not a day over five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you're married. They con conveniently fell in love exactly the the clock struck midnight. Right. And they fell in love. That's how it goes. And he's known her for years. Yeah, it's too, it's very strange. Very yeah. strange. Um, and he's not looking so great. I I'm not how I don't understand how you're like, I know men are, but I don't understand how men are so attracted to these, to women that look so, like elfin. Like it's not like she's like, it's it's like a child looking. Yeah. It's it's really this is common. 
Yeah. Look at Scott Disick and Sophia Richie or Drake yeah. and Millie Bobby Brown. Let's be real. Yeah. They oh, hooked up. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, of course they hooked up. I don't know if I Drake that. doesn't need to go to lunch with Millie Bobby Brown. Hey, yeah. come here. What, they're not having BLTs. Yeah. <laughs> why, would you, why are they texting? Yeah. I think these sure. things are odd. Um, I think it's just power and insecurity. Drake's yeah. insecure. Jake, and you know, because Drake has nothing going on for him. Right. So, yeah. Um, well, that's, those are, those are great comedians. Did you, um, have any of them, like, have you had people in your audience say, like, this is a pinch me moment that they're here watching me on stage? Oh, um, well, okay. Two things about that. One is that if there's a comedian I really respect, I have to ignore that they're there. Yeah. Because then I, you know, you just yeah. lose it. Yeah, yeah. And that's who I care most about watching my sets. I'm like, God, if there's a comedian here, it really, it has the potential to derail me if I think about it. Because it's a big, like, mentorship thing, yeah. right, in comedy. Well, they, yeah. they open for me, and you want them to like your set. Yeah. You also don't want to be just like, you know. But yeah. I, I remember one time I was at the cellar, and I had no idea, and then I was, who was in the audience, and then I looked, and it was Zoe Kravitz. Wow. And that, I mean, yeah. that's pretty yeah. intense. Yep. Zoe and, Kravitz I mean, is pretty You can't sexy. really ignore that. That girl, yeah, she is, uh, yeah, something, yeah, to lay your eyes on. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, congratulations on that. Thanks, yeah, Thank you. We've been dating for a few years, yeah, now. okay, great. And she's actually gonna be in the podcast, getting high with you next week, probably, right? yeah, okay, for sure, perfect. Um, so with you know, in regards to, to growing up and kind of we were talking about who you respect, I kind of want to walk through what were you like in high school, like you, you got ready every morning, what were you wearing, what, uh, what were you doing on the weekends? What music was on your oh my god on your iPod? What was I wearing? I was wearing ill-fitting clothes. Right. I didn't like have baggy. a sense. Baggy. Okay, so up until eighth grade, I was a tomboy. Okay. And I was wearing basketball shorts. Okay. Nike basketball shorts, or like those like basketball shorts that all the cool guys wear in gym class. The light blue ones. The light. Yeah. Oh, holy shit. Because everyone was obs obsessed with whichever Carolina team had the light blue. Why was yep. everyone obsessed with that team? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But... And like a t-shirt and I would have my hair in a ponytail and I would wear like Jordans. Like I was wow. literally. So you're ready to hit the court. A baby dyke. Yeah. And then I was like, come eighth grade, I was like, wait, this is like a lifestyle choice. Like I can't just do that. Like people think things when they see me like this. Right. I started to have a have sort of a greater sense of a, like what's going on. And I remember. Abercrombie was becoming sort of the it nightclub and <laughs> nightclub. Yeah. And yeah, like, you know, you're basically. like, boom, boom. Yeah. You have to like show your permit to get in. Yeah. And I remember going there with my mom and I wanted to go and like get some of the guys clothes. Cause I, th I wanted to be those guys on the wall that were like six, has like seven pack abs. Like it was just yeah. so sexy. Yeah. And, um, it was too daring of me to like get the clothes there. It was too intimidating. They'd be like, what are you doing? The fem sides over there. Like they were yeah. so, they're so binary and like, Oh yeah. It was too intense for me. Yeah. And then I remember I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this easy for my, my mom. I'm going to make the, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to be a martyr and I'm mm. going to just dress like a girl. And I started to do that. And as I did that, I, I didn't have a sense of style. My sense of style, I was just putting clothes on and kind of just, I wanted to be comfortable more than I wanted to be like in my identity. Like I was too hard to figure out who I was to dress for that. Yeah. So it was just, it was anything to really just cover my skin suit. Yeah. And that's, I mean, speaking of, you know, talking about Abercrombie kind of putting you in that box. Yeah. And that's, that's what causes, causes, you know, anxiety and depression even to this day. And the, the trauma that gets, for me, brought up with body dysmorphia is because you were literally, I walked into an Abercrombie once and they told me to walk out. Because I was overweight in high school, but I was just like, oh, I'll walk in and see what, if anything here will fit me. As a customer? As a customer. I didn't even get past, I didn't even touch, I've never touched um, something in the store. You're lying to me. What did they I, say? I Please walked walk in, out? They said, we don't have anything for you here, is what they said to me. That is, you should sue yeah. them. Oh, I mean, I was a 16 year old and I just didn't know how embarrassing. I just didn't even bring Statue it up. Statue of your limitations. Bring yeah. it up now. Yeah. Okay, great. That is, that is yeah. so upsetting. That is yeah. so disturbing. Did you yeah. watch the documentary? I'm sure you did. Um, I haven't watched it yet. No, because well, I, I think for you. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but that's what I'm like. Ugh, I don't know. Because it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's I know. Terrible. It's well, like... the guy was he even with how he looked. He also said that he's like, I don't want ugly people shopping here. I don't want fat people shopping here. You Doesn't know? want anyone who's not white shopping there. Yeah, I mean, literally. it was. I had an ex who worked there, and they talk about you're either a front of the store person or a back of the store. She was back of the store. Oh my god. I, it's really sick. Yeah, and they called they called the certain employees models. They didn't call them models, and right. they weren't even the models that stood out front. They were just you know, the most attractive people. If like you're you allowed said. to show your face, you're yeah. a model. 
Jeez. So yeah. disturbing. Yeah. And that was really, that was like, that was a huge part of, yeah. of the culture in high school is wearing up the Abercrombie and going into the store and having that experience. And it's also like the sex appeals plastered everywhere, but right. you're like all virginal, 12. Virginal. You know, it's kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And it, I remember they were the first publication or the not the first publication, the first catalog to show skin. But the, I think they even had topless girls at, at one point in their catalog that was being marketed to teenagers. Oh, totally. Yeah. I made a joke a few, like when I was watching it, I was like, the shopping bags were just like a scrotum. Yeah. Like it was yeah, just yeah. like, it was like a big dick. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was. It was literally like, I mean, low raised jeans, you were literally, it was VPL and uh, a happy trail. It was right. Like, what right. you're walking around in the bag with. Do yeah. you remember people would make the book covers from yes. the Abercrombie and Fitch bag? My school, um, they outlawed that because too many people were doing it. Even and this is a Christian school. No. Well, I went to Christian school until eighth grade. And then I begged to go to public school, which oh also God. traumatizing to walk in. And there's no good because, school. No, there's no good school. That's just a terror. I can't imagine, time. but I can't imagine being a teenager now. And then literally anyone can see what you're doing on the internet. That's impossible I to I think hide. about that all the time. Yeah, especially with TikTok. It's like, you can make a TikTok. I remember for me, even with MySpace and Facebook, you made content for your friends. You didn't make content for the world. But now with TikTok and Instagram, you're making content for the world. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's uh, it's just so difficult even as, as an adult. Having oh, yeah. access to social media is detrimental. Yeah. And having it as a child and seeing what people are up to, I was already, I was tormented enough. Yeah, we were talking about that before this. You know, Reddit, you know, it's terrifying. People oh, yeah. jump to conclusions with things and they don't know everything about someone's life. And Yeah, everyone's just sitting there yeah, in their they're just basement like, gotcha. wondering. They yeah. Want, yeah, everyone wants to have a gotcha moment or they just feel like they need to humble someone on the internet, you know, every yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Scary, scary. Um, okay, so you conformed and started dressing like a girl. And I'm dressing <laughs> yeah. like a girl. Yeah, but what, what was on your iPod? What was on my iPod? Yeah. I want to hear your playlist. Oh my God. Jeez. I liked um uh ninth grade. I was listening to um Mario. You um, should let, let me love you. you. Let, let me be the one to. I was doing that. I Did was... you know he was in Step Up? I remember no, watching know Step that. Up and I he was that. the best friend. Um my fiance is um an extra on the cover of Step Up on oh, a poster. That's amazing. And we laugh about that a lot. Me, and by a lot, I mean one time we laughed about it. And it's yeah. coming. <laughs> I'm thinking about it yeah. now. Could you imagine we like we like pull it up every week? We're like, yeah. that's if, pretty cool. No, you walk into your house and it's a mural. Music, music. I would burn CDs. Mm -hmm. This is in middle yeah. school. I would burn CDs. Maybe even, I don't. I would. I would burn, and I would give them out on the school bus. And I had like a blank sort of stack of CDs. I would put them into my computer, and that was sort of a power move. Nelly Dilemma. Yes, of course. Nelly, I mm -hmm. want um, you. I do. Well, remember the collab of the Lifetime with him and Tim McGraw? I don't. <gasps> um, had it. It's all in my head. Oh, I, I think, think about, about it over and over, over again. again. It's comedic, honestly. It so and they even bad. did a music video. I didn't know Tim McGraw was that. That's Tim McGraw. What is he doing in that? It's singing. That's Nelly singing. No. We're going to play it now. Yeah, please. Have to cut it, but. But um, it's all in my, my head. head. I think about it over, over and over, over again. again. I keep, can't keep it's picturing you with him. Because it, it hurts so, so bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I we did that. I, I Do you remember those little, like, stereo devices that they look like a small... Yeah. Head clips? Head clips. You'd yeah. put, like, a little disc in. It would play, like, say my name, mm. say my yep. name. Or um, NSYNC Our, was a big one on that. that yeah, I like, I mean... Yeah. 3LW, Say yeah. My Name, was that was a sexy fucking song. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, What's uh, this called? Over and Over. Oh. This is a great song. Um, I want to show you my favorite part. Wait, hold on. Yeah, please. That's Tim McGraw. They're both singing. Yeah, yeah. But the music video is comedic because they're just standing in a room together singing this song. It's, That's funny. Oh, uh, this part. <laughs> it's it's like sounds like something Lonely Island yeah, would it, sing yeah, right it right? does yeah. it feels like a almost like a spoof of itself yeah um I'm remembering now must be the money yeah uh, um, if you wanna go again that, 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 that and then also I loved two other things I loved was um God 
uh, what's that song where he's like, they did it on the sofa. Well, it was me, Shaggy. Shaggy, and I love Jewel. Wow, Jewel, you had quite the repertoire. Shania Twain. Well, obviously. I mean, these, was, th- these were like those yeah, were sort of a, the cultural the staple. Yeah, yeah I didn't know if you had any, if you had like an emo phase or anything like that. But, no, nah, nah. not really. I yeah. was already, I was, I didn't need to perform emo. I was depressed. You were depressed, right? You know, I so and, I didn't need to paint paint my nails black and be ups- I was, I w- could barely get out of bed. And then you, know? you just made bits about it. And yeah, jokes about I, it. yeah, yeah. I was still funny, but I was sad inside. Yeah, yeah. and well, and a lot of comedians. Famously. Yeah, famously. Sad yeah, sad clowns. What was a funny people movie with Leslie Mann and um, Adam Sandler? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember, I mean, even looking at Robin Williams, and I think that was eye opening for a lot of people that, that it's like comedians are funny and everyone thinks that funny people are happy, and that's not always the case. I feel yeah. like generally when you're funny, it's because you've experienced pain. Yeah. I yeah. feel that way. I mean, yeah. when people don't laugh, I'm like, you don't. You don't, you've not had, you haven't been hurt enough. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, you're broken and you can like kind of show more. But, yeah. It's just like, yeah. you're not, I don't know. It's like yeah. people that are like, I don't get that. Yeah. They can't see what I'm doing. Imagine not podcast. laughing. Imagine not seeing someone be funny. Like yeah, well, I was, what the fuck was I watching last night? Oh, I was watching Indian matchmaking. Oh yeah. And I was watching a scene where, what is her name? She's cute. Every guy doesn't like her, and we don't know why. Mm, I don't watch that show. You don't watch it? No. Oh, God. I think her name's Nadia. I want to say it's Nadia, and she brings a guy home, and she has a family that's kind of cool, Mm -hmm. but they still are like traditional Indian values, and you see the things that they're laughing at, and I'm like, oh, it's because they're like repressed. Yep, exactly. So it's like things aren't funny. They're just, they just, any comment that sort of diverges from the normal talking points right. gets a laugh because yeah. they're like oh dangerous yep it's wow. not funny though yeah that's, i mean that makes sense you know and obviously there's a lot of studies and i've even seen i read an article or watch a tiktok about uh, yeah i read an article about, yeah read an article um can i ask you a question just regarding mental health Rod, as a comedian i said you can ask me anything i know um with imposter syndrome yeah do you face it on stage all the time yeah and how do you power how do you power through I mean, I really deal with this a lot. Yeah. And I think everyone does. Yeah, even like, I talk about it in the corporate world. Everyone. Everyone does. does. I mean, I really, I mean, I'm on this, sh- I'm on a show tonight. Yeah. And it's me and it's Whitney Cummings. Wow. And it's Eliza. Wow. And it's Andrew Santino. It's a few other people. Yeah. And I'm like, Eliza's mother, millennial. That's like her whole is thing. Is she? Yeah. She's Schlesinger? L- yeah. It's, oh, I didn't know. Her whole thing is being a millennial. I feel like she's, okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, this is in my head. I'm like a, po- a voice in my head is going. That's not right. You shouldn't be on that lineup. Wow. And then, but I have to say to that voice, I literally have to go. Shut the fuck up. Stop. Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. And you have to consciously interrupt the thoughts. Mm-hmm. And the more frequently you do that, the less the 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 lower that voice gets. Right. But the voice is always there. It's just your whatever you want to call that voice. Yeah, I think it's just there taking you down. Yeah, you got to put it in another room, close the door for a little bit. But um, no, seal the door. Seal the you door. don't need to ever yeah. open the door. Exactly. But I'm saying you know, it'll come out. It'll still escape. Yeah. But with um, what I, usually my imposter syndrome is I don't deserve to be here, whether it's in a, a job or even in this room. Sometimes when I'm filming this podcast, I'm like, why? No one's gonna listen to this. Why am I doing this? Right. Um, but then I did. I was doing a red carpet, and I was like, I don't deserve to be here. And then my friend looks over at me and she goes, she like grabbed me by the face and she's like, look me. She goes, look me. She looked me in the eye. She's like. Tell yourself right now you deserve this. Uh-huh. Think about why you deserve this. Because mm-hmm. instead, I listen to people on the internet. I'll see one comment like, "Why does a TikToker get to do this?" You know, and it's like, okay, great. So, yep, that, I'm taking that one comment opposed to the hundreds of others where people are like proud of you. You know, it, because you don't. Our brain doesn't take in the good unless we actually. You can see good, but unless you actively practice gratitude, shout out LA, yep. then you don't experience the positive. It's just yeah. your brain doesn't even, it's like, ne- just go to the negative. Yeah. So if you don't take a minute to look at the comment that says, we love you and go, wow, someone behind is writing, we love, that's so nice. And just take that pause. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Wow. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, you're welcome. <laughs> give me one second. I'm going to do a little segment here. Uh-huh. Um, where I'm going to do a rapid fire question. Okay. Great. And it's going to be like five or six. And you just have to say what comes to mind. Okay? I'm, fr- I'm familiar with the yeah. uh, term rapid, rapid fire. fire. Yeah. It's so just like what it is. It's a question I ask and you have to answer quickly. 
like rapidly. Rapid fire? Rap yes. Might okay. it be rapid fire? Yeah. Okay. Um Disney Channel show. Boy Meets World. Boy Meets World. The first one I could think of. Okay. Did you did you watch it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I love, love Topanga. Love Topanga. I was um actually sitting in front of her at a John Mayer concert. I turned around and she's like, I right love John Mayer. Like, hmm. I'm like, that's Topanga. And everyone else is like, oh my God. Like Dua Lipa was somewhere in the crowd. I'm like, I and loved they, yeah. her and yeah. I loved um, Sean's older brother. Oh, yeah. And that is the bisexual journey. Yeah, there you go. There you go. In a um, nutshell. Yeah, in a nutshell. Uh, Pearl Harbor, I think, is another one with Kate Beckinsale. And, I fucking love that. Yeah, exactly. Another bisexual journey. Why? Well. Because you're attracted to Kate Beckinsale and Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Matt uh, um, Hart. Josh, Josh, Josh Hartnick. Hartnick. Yeah. yeah. All three. Yeah. Yeah. There you first. go. I was that movie. I would watch it over and over again. It was seven hours long. Yeah. I would find the time. Yeah, if I it was one of those. Uh, I think it was on when I was on VHS. It was two discs or two uh, tapes. It was. Yeah. That Who did she end up with? Um. Well, Ben Affleck because Josh Hartnett dies. Good. But I think she had Josh Hartnett's baby. Well, she was originally with Ben. She was originally with Ben. He goes to Pearl Harbor. Goes to the war. He goes. She to, thinks he's. He dead. goes to the war. He goes to Germany or he goes to Europe, and so she's in Hawaii with Josh. And she thinks he's dead. Thinks he's dead. So Josh is there in they the time of need. They fall in love. They do the deed. Oh my God, Ben's and, alive. Oh my God, here comes Ben in a Hawaiian shirt. And people are like, what? And then the night that Ben and Josh get in a homoerotic fight, mm -hmm. next day's Pearl Harbor. Wow. And um, Josh Hartnett dies. Mm -hmm. But thank God it allows her to be with Ben. It's the only way the plot would have worked. But it's with Josh's kid. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's named after Josh. Okay, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So there was that. Great um, movie. Great movie. Great movie. Love that movie. Um, after school snack. Peanut butter and pretzels. Ooh. I just, I'm scared to not answer fast enough, so I just said peanut butter and pretzels. Maybe I should. I, I need to stop saying rapid fire. Cause Eggo I waffles, from. potato yeah. chips. Eggo waffles food. after school? I, my house was lawless. Oh. So you were probably like, your friends probably loved coming over. Oh, they loved that, it. That's nice. My, my, uh, the, uh, the, the pantry was filled with just every chemical under the sun. I love that. Oh See, my God. Junk, 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 junk. We were, we went, we were, didn't have a lot of money growing up. So it was uh -huh. a lot of Kool-Aid packets and spaghetti and stuff like that. And then once we started to be able to afford more, yeah, um, it was all 90s fad diets in my house. So like our snacks were like the snack wall cookies. Oh, we had those, those too. Yeah. Or just like Gross. low fat. I didn't like those. Packs. Me either. Cause they're disgusting. Yeah. Um, weird texture. Oh yeah, the hundred and, calorie packs. You ever yeah. have a few hundred calorie packs? Yeah, or like, and they're so like dry, like those, those little like thin. They're like dehydrated. Yeah, cookies. It literally, it's like a dehydrated cookie. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Um. Okay, and then last question mm -hmm. I had was, um, well, MySpace or Facebook? Facebook never had MySpace. You never had MySpace. Mm -mm. Interesting. So you didn't get to rank your friends publicly. I think I like saw that for a moment, but then yeah. it was the second it became, oh, I became aware of it. Facebook was. You had to lie about your age because you had to be in college, college. to get on. Yep. And I remember I was with my friend and she was like, okay, friend these people. And I was like, well, hang on a second. Yeah, well, well, these are popular people. She's like, no, you friend everyone. I'm like, but won't they find it strange that I'm friending them? And she was like, no, trust me. This is the social protocol is you there friend you everyone. And I was like, all right. I remember, you know, clicking on someone's name. I was like, I hope they don't see this and think I'm like texting them. Yep. Or they deny you. That was nerve-wracking. Yeah. Right. I didn't understand it was really a free-for-all. Yeah. It truly was a free-for-all. And then just the fact that your status would be like, Allie is sleeping one day. Or mine was like, Rod is tired. And the next day, Rod is in an existential crisis. Why am I on this for Earth? And then... Wow. Rod, you had it rough. Rod is listening to the fray. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Definitely. Well, Allie, thank you so much for coming on Millennial Made today. Thank you. You. Um, so we have the Allie Colbert Show right here. The Allie Colbert Show. And then... What is uh, your social handles? I'm one? at Allie Colbert, A-L-I Colbert with a K, with a K. on everything, Instagram, okay. TikTok. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, can't wait to be in your podcast. And Let's this, do it right now. Yeah. Oh, should we film it right now? Let's do it right now. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, uh, to, thanks for tuning to Millennial Made. If you're watching this, like and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment, a nice one, and <laughs> any mean comments will be deleted. I don't even care about engagement at this point. Can't handle that publicly. And... Um, Thanks so much for listening. Have a great rest of your week.